to another episode of The Real Man of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle Jr. I'm here with my very special guest, Dr. Sharon Barnes, and we're going to be uh, talking for about an hour on different things that uh, she's doing in the real estate space. So let's get the chance to meet uh I used to know her as Sharon Barnes, but then she told me she has a doctor in front of her name, so I got to call her by her proper name, Dr. Sharon Barnes. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Thomas. Thanks for having me on Thank the show. Thank you for joining the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, so let's get started on having the folks know who you are and how did you, uh, are you originally from California or what? I was born in Texas, raised in California, though. My roots are in Compton, from Compton by way of Pomona. Um you know, Cal State Fullerton, bought my first house back in Pomona, just been in an empire for over 30, 40 years now. Okay, so you inundated in the Inland Empire. Okay, yes. so uh, let's just give them a, a, a brief synopsis of who you are and how did we get here on uh, you doing the things that you're doing. So let's just get started going. Wow, Thomas, that's a loaded question, <laughs> and you want me to cover like 30 years in like, uh, you know, three minutes, and um, I can talk, so let me just uh, hit some of the highlights and just say we understand that as we go through life, stages change, and we have to re-strategize, so I was raised in, in Compton, um, graduated from Pomona High, went to Cal State Fullerton. Uh, started working in aerospace. I started working in aerospace wow. when I was in high school. So some of my, you know, I was back, you know, when they had the CEDAR program. So I never worked a Jack in the Box at McDonald's. They wouldn't hire me, okay? <laughs> but I was with the Legal Aid Society in Pomona when I was in high school. I um, had a little uh, job at General Dynamics when I was in high school. Wow. And so when I went to college and it came time to do the internship, I'm trying to find places to go, and my aerospace exposure in high school got me the internships in aerospace at, um, at Northrop and Hughes Aircraft when I was in college at Cal State Fullerton. So, of course, it naturally followed when I graduated from college. My first job was back at General Dynamics, <laughs> <laughs> where I was in high school, and I was in the logistics support department. And uh, it, was a, it was a decent job. I mean, it was good. It had benefits and everything. It was really nice. But I was like 21 years old because I graduated a um, year early from high school. I graduated at 17. I graduated a little bit early from college. I graduated like by the time I was like 20. <laughs> and so I'm at 21 punching the clock every day, going through these gates and getting searched, uh, coming in and out of job. I'm like... Nah, I don't think I want to do this, and I'm 65, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I got to be a better way. So I decided to go back to school and could make up my mind whether I would go for my master's or go, for, um, go to law school, whatever. So I applied to about 10 universities, got accepted at all of them, and still had to decide which way to go. So I thought law was the high road. <laughs> <laughs> if I fell there, I could always go back and get a master's. You know, that's just my young mind thinking. So I went to law school. Long story short, I did graduate, did pass the bar. Not the first time, but I passed. That's the important part. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I started uh, my law career while, um, well, my first cases that I did, believe it or not, was while I was working at Northrop on the um, B-2 bomber. Oh. And I had a couple of colleagues who got in trouble with their security clearance, and they had to go up uh, in front of the DOD. And I had my license. I was fresh out of the off the boat, but I knew aerospace. <laughs> so I represented them, and I won. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, I won those two cases, and then I... Um, outside of aerospace, my first job was with a law firm over in Riverside, uh, was filling and bailed in, and um, they did personal injury and medical malpractice. And so that was my first uh, legal job. And uh, back in the downturn of 1994, around 94, 92, back there anyway, we went through a dip, and they had to cut down, and I was laid off as one of the newer associates, and I started my own law practice. Okay. I also um, got pregnant um, in 1990, and I had a high-risk pregnancy, and my daughter was born with special needs. We rotated in and out the hospital for two years, and um, I 
couldn't convince anybody that I could work 40 hours for them, although I was working 80 hours for myself. Wow. So, <laughs> you know, you have to do what you have to do. True. So um, I had my own law practice. Then I went into a uh, partnership with two other um, black female attorneys over in Riverside. So we opened up one of the first uh, black female attorney law firms back in 1992. Congratulations. And, uh, <laughs> so we did that. That was an experiment that didn't have the results that we hoped for, but it was a good experiment. And then I was back on my own. So I practiced law for a while. I did medical malpractice, personal injury, family law, civil law. What I really liked to do uh, in that practice was help my community. So I did a lot of business uh, coaching, business development. I opened up my office to nonprofits and to small groups. Uh, <laughs> I had an office down in Ontario. I mean, we had everything from Bible study, doing lunch hour to <laughs> <laughs> to business coaching after hours. <laughs> so there's a lot of people that uh, kind of benefited from um, that practice. But you know, I think that was that was my calling, and it's just been to help my community to make informed decisions, to leverage what they have, and to make the best out of what we can do. Wow. I'm amazed. So, I mean, right now, if we wanted to, we can just cut the show because <laughs> she just slammed it, dropped the mic and everything. So <laughs> That's just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, that's that's uh, a, a wonderful accomplishment and, and um, for you to uh, be able to do all those different things and whatnot. Um, my thing is, give me some of that brain power. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, it takes more than brain power. Said, hey, the Lord was there because um, things happen. I mean, there's challenges along the way. Um, doing, um, I have been married to my husband. We've been married 38 years now. Congratulations. My number one supporter, my, my business partner now, and our, our newest in, in endeavor with the uh, uh, accessory dwelling units and now so do forth. me a favor say yes. that one more time because there's a lot of people that don't even get a chance to get to 30 years so <laughs> you 38. know 38 i mean that's <laughs> wonderful you know what yeah. i mean with all the different challenges that goes yeah. on in this world i yeah. mean for you guys to be able to still be together through the storm i, yeah. I am very impressed with that thank you yeah it's been some storms i mean we we've had some challenges i mentioned i had a high-risk pregnancy um, my daughter was born with cerebral palsy we rotated in and out the hospital for a couple of years, and her problems, my problems, and there was times when my husband was coming to visit, and my, my parents, and they were going from one floor to visit me, and down to another floor to visit her. Wow. Okay, I remember getting discharged from the hospital, and having people drive me to the hospital to see my daughter. And then I was able to drive myself, but I had to push myself in a wheelchair or get somebody to push <laughs> me to go see. Oh, my baby was in there. Okay? Yeah, well, that's good. So you have to do what you have to do. Then we had five good years, and the Lord ushered her back home when she was seven. Oh, but he I'm sorry left to me. hear that, but I'm glad. Yeah, but he left me here. That's good. You know, and so all that nurturing and supportive and everything, he, he left me here for a purpose. So, so you fighting I've the power. I've been trying to give it back. You're fighting the power. So... Um, let's, let's, let's advance in, in a little bit. So, um, how did you end up getting into real estate? It was basically my first, um, push into real estate was my client. Uh, when I was practicing <coughs> law, I started, um, with a lot of market, um, real estate investors, mortgage brokers, uh, people that were coming together to do projects across the country. They were forming their LLCs. They needed uh, contractual documents. They needed legal questions to answer as they decided which way to go, what uh, what entity would be best, you know, and things like that. So um, I worked with them, and they kept saying, "You need, you need to go into real estate. You need to be our broker. You need, <laughs> you need to get your license, okay?" And then, you know, it was one thing that sometimes these projects, the money doesn't always equal out the way you know you think. Correct. So the real estate license was a value-added service because even as an attorney, I couldn't split in the commissions. I couldn't do certain things directly related to real estate and get that real estate-related money unless I had a license to do so. So my clients pushed me into getting my real estate license to start with, and I had that combined with the practice of law. And then along the line, like I said, things happen in life, and real estate became my number one, and my legal knowledge is just my value-added service that I can give back. Okay, so 
that's where I come in to play because I knew you <laughs> as an agent and I didn't know all the other stuff. But now that I know that it's like, okay, now we on the right track. So when I came into California and uh, started doing it, I ended up meeting you at a real estate investment club called Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. Yes. Matter of fact, I met you and your uh, partner in crime, Latoya <laughs> Tilly, yes. which uh, she was a guest last month. Right. So <laughs> how did that incorporate it with you two? Oh, wow. Um, well, my first knowledge and becoming uh, knowing Latoya was as a co-worker at one of the brokerages, uh, real estate brokerages in Upland. And she was there with her cousin, and she was starting to work, and they worked real estate. And um, then we moved to another office, same company up in in um, Colton, and she went and got a job. And so I kept reaching out, like, if you get anything with real estate, I'm here. We can still work together, right? <laughs> and uh, she came back in, you know, full time, and we started um, just doing things together because we kind of clicked and we, you know, shared information, shared knowledge with each other, shared deals and uh, whatever. And it was really kind of funny because, you know, we were in coach and she would go to her aunt's house for lunch or whatever, and she keep talking about her family. Okay, she kept coming up talking about her family, but one day she went to lunch and she came back, and I guess my name, it came up, and she said, I think you know my auntie, and she said the name, and I'm like, yeah, so they were, I've been knowing your family for years, and so we know that we've had to cross paths before, but we just weren't aware of each other until then. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to cut this short real quick, we're going to take a commercial break, and we're going to come back with our guest, Dr. Sharon Barnes, thank you for listening to The Real Men of Real Estate.